Welcome back. We're here again. Uh, the number is released by the Office of the National Security Advisor for you to call in if you notice anything on toward that may disrupt perhaps the elections or anything anywhere. So those numbers, for instance, the first one, 0705727 and then the SMS code you see that is such that you could text, uh, it's called U report SMS number uh, 20544. Well, there are several numbers, you could just pick one of them and then send your comments at any time. You might as well try them now and see if it works. If that makes you happy. Well, let's go for the headlines now with Anne Wilder. Hello, Kimberly. If you click on the headlines now, the presidential election will hold on, the March, on March the 28th, and that's because there is no reason why the exercise should be postponed. That's official, as Professor Tahiri Jagat told accredited observers for the 2015 general election in Abuja today that the commission has strengthened everything and is now set to roll. The All Progressive Congress candidate, General Muhammad Buhari, today held a town hall meeting with a cross section of Nigerian women in Lagos, where he made what he calls a solemn promise to uphold their rights. He said women play an important role in a democratic process and will be given the opportunity to aspire to any position in the country. And while the All Progressive Congress presidential candidate was crisscrossing the city of Lagos today, the presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party took his train to Dematuru, the Yibo State Capital. President Kutlak Jonathan, who was accompanied by his deputy Namadi Sando and other PDP chieftains, vowed that his administration will resist any attempt by Boko Haram to take control of any town or village within the country again. The Islamic State has claimed responsibility for the attack on a museum in the Tunisian capital, Tunis. The claim is made in an audio message published by Twitter accounts known to be reliable primary sources of Islamic State propaganda. Of these are the headlines. You're still watching Nigeria 2015. Back to you, Chamberlain. Well, thank you, Anne. And then let me get back to my guest, uh, uh, Captain Omar, who did say those three outstanding states are uh, watershed. But yes, the chairman of the commission also raised concerns about the personnel that they would deploy there. But in light of the uh, successes that the Nigerian military has recorded, even if those three areas are perhaps still not recovered as much as they would love to, and then March 28 catches up, catches on with us, should there be any reason whatsoever why they should think, okay, look, do we hold elections in every other place, and then maybe a question mark on those three states, those three areas? Yeah, I look at it from the, from the security perspective, and I'll tell you this much. Indicators available to me within that area, in the, you know, they just clearly show that much has improved. And clearly, the military authorities have said these areas have been liberated. Liberated means liberated. If you observed, Aboko Haram, which was actually very, very brutal and swift, has suddenly been denied what I call a soft landing. They are actually on one foot right now. One foot means they are running. And it's been proven by the fact that they seek an alternative heaven. They are actually pledging allegiance to the ISIS. Pledging allegiance to the ISIS means you've lost ground. They're going to ISIS not as stakeholders per se, they're going to ISIS as underdogs. But about the report that ISIS eventually accepted ISIS allegiance. has accepted its allegiance. But if you look at it, you discover that what ISIS stands for and what ISIS sets out to do, Boko Haram may not be key to it. Boko Haram may actually come in and boost ISIS numbers. The geographical divide and distance already sets certain things we must look into that are also very important. That they're going to ISIS does not mean they're going to ISIS with the kind of muscle they would have had where they, where they wanted to build a caliphate and lost. So they're going to ISIS as 
do I call them second hand insurgents? Yeah. Second hand people, exactly. Uh, I'm actually, I mean, there seems to be a ground swell of opinion that yes, elections have to go on no matter what happens. The chairman of INEC says that much as well. What would your impression be if, uh, at the end of the day, elections go ahead and hold in every other part of the country, but those three 